Saturday, um, July 17th. I almost said November 17th. That's my mom's birthday. Um, yeah, uh, July 17th. We're going to jump right into it, beginning with massage. Try again. And party. Spirit says 29, which is all about spiritual partnership. No. And weekend away. Maybe that's the upcoming weekend. Uh, with the cards, we are beginning with the lovers in reverse. This is interesting. I didn't even, I didn't even look at this in advance. Um, this is really interesting. The lovers in reverse. And behind it is also the hermit in reverse. So I think this may be due to the fact that Mercury enters cancer, or entered cancer yesterday, the 11th the day. I normally would have put this reading up. Um, as it got later and later in the day, I was like, you know what? I shouldn't even try to fool with this in YouTube today because by the time I get it up, it's going to be late and they already barely send out my notifications, you know, to anybody. So, they're le even less likely to do it now and people are less likely to see me, you know, like in the news feed or whatever at this hour. So let me just wait till tomorrow. And then of course I waited till late again. I mean, not as, at, not as late as it was yesterday. It was like really late. Now it's like nine 30. So hopefully I can get it up, get it done and up within the next hour or two. Um, you know, before it's too, too late. But I had a I had a very productive day and I am not complaining. So some of you know like the other stuff that I work on in my daily life, my you know regular life, and one of the things is this affordable um, a building uh, that's being developed, and my coalition is advocating for it to be one hundred percent affordable housing, you know, to varying degrees of affordability. And every day we get um you know a new meeting with another congressman or councilperson or some other representative, senator or something, or a reporter. So just being very, very successful. So uh, I do apologize. I plan to continue my work on YouTube and keep up with it, but that's why I'm late. Anyway, getting back to this, yesterday I started to say, was the day um, that Mercury entered, left Gemini, it's one of its home signs, and entered the next sign on its path, Cancer. So... Um, Mercury rules both Virgo, which the Hermit represents, and Gemini, which the Lovers represents. Both of these cards were back to back with the Lovers being on top, the Hermit, in reverse. And both of these cards pretty much mean the same thing as they do upright when they're in reverse, except for the Lovers slightly. So Lovers is still a really positive omen as it relates to love and, you know, really excellent for meeting people if you're, you know, single and looking and really positive in terms of reciprocity and genuine love, true love, if you're already coupled. Um, <laughs> and with the hermit, whether sometimes this, because it's in reverse though, like the energy is slightly weakened, so it might not be as strong as it, what occurs in your love life. And it's usually within the coming days, not gonna be like forever, um, like forever from now. Um, so you know, it's like a reading for the for this week. It probably will ha happen this week. Like you'll see or feel or whatever, experience the effects of this lover's card this week. Um, but again, when it's in reverse, it's like lessened than when it's upright. So the hermit tends to be about a relationship from your past, like rekindling a relationship from your past with an ex. Maybe the person will be a Virgo. Maybe the person will be a Gemini. Um, that doesn't have to be the case, but I definitely think it's, uh, like a real, a genuine love connection, somebody that you had a real relationship with, um, or, and, or that really care for you. Um, even if you didn't make it official, official and then returning somehow, maybe via communication, because again, these two are ruled by Mercury, which rules communication or maybe travel, um, with weekend away, maybe you will be traveling, you'll be away and you'll bump into them. Maybe they'll travel to wherever you are and bump into them. Or maybe, you know, you'll do a Jennifer and Ben and, and you know, all of a sudden communicate and decide to go on a trip together. I don't know, but, but something um, 
for real. And this is, they're both karmic energy, you know, because they're both major arcana cards coming through. So this is a really nice way to start. And it goes well with our next deck too. And our next card uh, that we're starting with, it's love partnership. Followed by individuality. So it's like maybe having a relationship but still maintaining some so, sort of sense of self and continuing self-love too and, you know, keeping your your identity. Maybe even actually entering a part, or like an official partnership, like getting married or something, but keeping your own last name, um, you know, particularly if you're a female. And then there's abundance too. So um, this can mean many things, including love, but the relationship, I think, valuable and one of which you are deserving and worthy. And, you know, same for the other individual or individuals. It could be poly or something, too, um, that are involved. And the next deck also fares well for these energies in terms of, again, a new relationship or rekindling an old relationship or an existing relationship. It's the Ace of Wands, an exciting new opportunity. Career advancement, change your life now. Ace of Wands can be about travel. Maybe it too has something to do with Weekend Away. Um, and or uh, it could be about a okay, new, brand new relationship, you know, fresh start. Or a new stage or phase in an existing relationship. Or a new start for people who had a previous relationship that are rekindling. Behind that is the King of Wands. He's motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. Focus, focus, focus. Communicate with vision and be a leader. Take advice from someone creative. King of Wands is the quintessential divine masculine of the tarot. It can, this can be representing particularly that, you know, that this is a twin flame or divine union relationship. The King of Wands is also potentially a direct fire sign. And Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Speaking of Aries, Chiron, which is located in Aries, Chiron, the wounded healer, goes retrograde this week. That could be another re reason, perhaps, why this fire is showing up. Um, somebody could take some sort of initiative or leadership position in a relationship as well, or toward a relationship. The next card is also upright, and it's another ace. It's the last card that's upright here. It's another ace, ace of cups. Falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship. So that goes well with these cards, too. It bodes well for everything that we've talked about already. Spe um, spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, maybe even a new home. Yes, especially something like that. When the two aces together, very auspicious for things like a new home. Again, marriage, engagement, so, so cohabitation relationship starting beginning restarting um tighter commitment greater bonds very emotionally fulfilling fresh start passionate not you know this is an exciting situation it's not like just dull like your heart is you know when when the ace of wands and the ace of cups are together like this no wrong order it's this, this, this. Okay. As if I'm not going to shuffle them. Anyway. I'm going to do three of these. There's the Queen of Cups. She too is in reverse. Maybe that's representative of the Cancer. Again, it's uh, Mercury and Cancer. There's the High Priestess. She can be representative of the sign of Gemini or a water sign. Again, maybe specifically Cancer. Our new overall energy is the Three of Wands. The next card is in reverse. It's the Nine of Pentacles. Patience, compassion, spirituality. Let's do one more. And it's abundance again.
I did notice that all the cards that seem to be coming up were like doubles. You know, it's like 88, 77, something. Uh, I forgot what the other one was. <laughs> and now 33, communication. Again, maybe that's the Mercury. And health. Communication and health. But orange is sacral chakra. Purple is crown. So it's very, it is very um, like Mercury and Cancer, you know, sacral chakra, the sexual energy, maybe Scorpio more so than Cancer, but water, you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> um, Queen of Wands, don't underestimate your ability to manifest your dreams. You may have several priorities vying for your attention at once, but you can do it. And behind that, we have Major Arcana card 11 Strength, um, which represents the sign of Leo, which the Queen of Wands may in fact be. She can be an Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, or not a fire sign at all, just someone likened to those traits or attributes. Um... She is the quintessential divine feminine of the tarot. So again, maybe representative of the fact that we are talking about some sort of divine union, a twin flame relationship. The next card is in reverse. It is the nine of swords. Maybe previously we had some sort of fear of or anxiety of reaching out, communicating, juggling some stuff or people, dating, getting in contact. And now we don't. Some sort of three-party situation, um, party of three, as I tend to call them, uh, could be involved too. Here we have the two rods together, like the two of rods, which is the soul flame or um, soul flame. Well, yeah, I guess you could call it a soul flame. Twin flame or divine union or soulmate card of the tarot. Uh, and then we have one off to the side by itself. It's sort of extra. Um, we can also look at this as two and their new beginning, like the Ace of Wands. Also, three of um, wands in general is about how very close you are to fully manifesting what it is you've been focused on. And the next step is the four of wands when it's complete. So like one is the thought. You know, the idea, the words we speak over ourselves that we're trying to manifest. Two is the faith that we put into it behind it. And we believe it's really going to come to pass. And then it's three. We can actually start to see something on the horizon. Something coming more tangible coming through. And then, of course, four, we, have, we are on a solid foundation. First card we'll pull today from the Rider Waite deck will represent the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Your card is the Queen of Pentacles. Upright. Earth signs are next. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Your card is the Devil, which represents the sign of Capricorn in reverse. Air signs. We are up next. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Our card is... High Priestess. And last but not least, Water Signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Your card is the Hermit. Still in reverse. Although we've shuffled and cut and everything else. There's our overall energy, the Three of Wands. So, in addition to what I've already said about the Three of Wands, um, what we also may want to think about I mean, generally when the Three of Wands pops up in a love reading, it means that things should be going well if we're already in an existing relationship, we have a partner. But it's like only if you have a partner who treats you as an equal. I mean, this 
two-sided and only one on one side can also represent like inequity or un imbalance in a relationship. So if you feel like you're not being treated as an equal um, and the fact that this card has shown up, then for you, it you should have a conversation with your, with your partner because um, it, it's possible that it may be time to, to move on. If you've already made complaints, you know, made yourself clear and they don't seem to be responsive or making any changes, then for you, situation, I mean, you know, maybe coming to an head and maybe you want to consider getting out. Um, but for the most part, again, this would be a positive card. Uh, if you are out there and meeting people, dating, whatever, maybe you've recently met somebody new, um, you should know that they hold you in very high regard. And, you know, so they, they, you know, think highly of you, even if relationship doesn't seem to be um, catching on or moving on or entering commitment or whatever as fast as maybe you like and you feel like you're not sure. Does they, they like me? They not like me? Um, you know, just know that they do and they hold you by very high regard. For us air signs in particular, I'm going to jump around um, only because we have the high priestess in reverse. And sometimes for me, she can be somebody who suffers from like dysmorphia, like body dysmorphia, for example, like you look in the mirror and, uh, oh, I'm fat or I'm skinny, I'm ugly, I'm whatever. And you don't see yourself the way other people see you. Um, you know, so you could be suffering from, from that. And maybe that's what you're thinking you know, oh, maybe they don't really like me. Maybe the relationship's not moving because, again, I'm too skinny, I'm too fat, I'm too ugly or whatever. And you're doing that to yourself. They're not thinking that at all. Um, what else? So also, I think I would want to say about this card that, oh, yeah, if you're single and looking. I don't think I did, I did those. Um, if you're single and looking and you don't feel like, and you haven't met anybody recently and you feel like, you know, do I even have any prospects? Like, what's up with me? Why am not? Why am I not meeting anybody? Again, you could be thinking the reason I'm not meeting anybody is because I'm this, I'm that, I'm the other thing. No, that's not it either. You're probably just spending too much time and effort on your work or career, money, focus on money and stuff like that. And so that's why you're not um, like making enough room or time for your personal life. So think about allowing more time for that. You know, to actually meet people and stuff. Um, so moving on to the Queen of Pentacles for the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Your card is very positive too. It's a super feminine card. Um, you know, she's in, she's definitely like a nurturer, the Queen of Pentacles. She may in fact be an actual earth sign, um, a Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. Some of you may, be, may in fact be Cuspian, and maybe you are you know, more so your ascendant or your moon is, is coming through right now and it's of the earth element. Um, or, you know, your sun, you're a, you're a, you're a, um, I don't know, an Aries, Taurus or um, a Sagittarius, Capricorn or something like that. Um, yeah, a Leo, Virgo, yes. <laughs> I had a thing for a second. I'm sorry. Um, but you, you guys get the idea. Also, um, it's like this card can also be a card of strategy, especially if you're single. And the strategy is sort of like to find love is like the stereotypical feminine kind. Like, you know, don't chase it. Make yourself available. Um, but also like, don't be desperate to bring somebody into your life. Um, which I guess some people want to say, well, that's the stereotypical version. Like you guys always, uh, that can be like a, a, a thing with women, you know, it's like we go on and on about being single and we have a clock ticking and all that kind of stuff. Um, but definitely you want to, you want to, you know, think about a mindset if you, if you are dealing with that of, you know, like I, I attract, I don't chase. I don't attract, I don't chase. If you have to make it a mantra, I talked about um, a new spiritual practice. I think it came up in the moon reading that I did recently, a morning, new morning ritual or something. Maybe this is it. You go to the mirror. I don't chase, I attract, you know, until you believe it. Um, so that could be for some people. <laughs> I keep going into like a zoom and, you know, like, and feel like something's trying to come in, but not, um, yeah, just don't be too desperate to try to, you know, get into a relationship or whatever and like rush, uh, when the time is right, it's going to be clear to you that the time is right. And, you know, you won't have to 
do cartwheels or backflips or nothing to make it come about. Right? It's just going to happen. So definitely keeping yourself upbeat and positive and you have a lot of things um, or you can have a lot of things that um, in you that are worth loving and you know you should love them yourself and believe that and somebody else is going to come along and love them as well. Um, what else? I think I covered all the areas. Of course, if you are in a relationship, oh, she also likes to, she's a, a like a, what they call that? Nesting, right? You know, she's like an OG nurturer and she likes to prepare the environment and, you know, it's like prepare a home, make a home, you know, so you may be doing that too. Even if you're single, you may find yourself doing that. Sometimes we get into these things where we start like remodeling or redecorating or cleaning up, you know, it's like a spring cleaning type of thing. And next thing we know, love comes in, you know, if we, you know, that this is an example for if you are single, but coupled women do this too. Women in partnership do this too when this energy is around us. Um, moving on, I guess, to the devil in reverse. And this is for the earth signs again, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. And the devil actually represents the sign of Capricorn in the tarot. So for one thing, that may be why it's showing up. I'm debating pulling another card for you guys right now. I think I may. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so the next card is, it's the Queen of Cups, still in reverse. I can't really see this. I don't know if you could see it before. But I thought I had done a good job of, all right, that's better. Okay, I think that's good. Um, all right, so looking at the, the the devil for a second in reverse, and this can kind of be like a like a friendly warning <laughs> that some sort of trouble or like mess is brewing. Um, it would be in an, like an existing long term relationship if this is happening, and one or both of you may be beginning to feel as though they're sort of trapped in the situation and or in the relationship. And the time will soon come that you may need to try and talk about it if you want to save the relationship. But I mean, know that the reversed meaning of this card is definitely less troubling with regard to long-term relationships or relationships in general as the upright card. Um, so it doesn't have to mean like the end of a relationship, like it's doomed or a breakup, but some bullshit or mess, again, may be brewing and or it is possible that one of you is feeling stuck in if, if either in a situation or maybe the situation that's brewing um, or in the relationship itself. And even that doesn't have to mean the end. You could feel stuck or trapped and maybe that just means something needs to change about the relationship, about the dynamic, about... Um, remember the, the beginning cards, remember the love partnership, but individuality was important, you know, so if you're feeling trapped, if you feel like you're just part of a unit and you're not yourself anymore, you're like, you're losing yourself while you're in a relationship, that may be something you want to address, but that doesn't mean you necessarily want to end the relationship. Uh, so that can be what this devil is about. Um, also if you are looking for love and, and pull this card, then you probably should give some sort of consideration as to how much you may be feeling trapped in singlehood. And if it's like a, a race to being coupled or like what's going on. And because you got to do your best to, you know, um, find like peace and love within yourself first. I mean, I know it's like cliche, but if you just, same thing I was just telling, and they got the earth energy too, right? I just telling the fire signs. If it's just like for the sake of being coupled, because again, the clock is ticking or whatever your reason is, then we also got to make sure that we're loving ourselves. And, you know, all three of these, and perhaps all four of these, could even point to a need to confirm, affirm self-love before, you know, like worrying about 
what might be or might not be going on with somebody else. So just think about that one first. And then if, you, if that doesn't apply to you, then move on to, okay, well, let me look at my relationship then. Um, if we are like... coming off well, you know how people give off vibes right so if we are sort of like walking around like this like air of desperation for a relationship and for love th that will i mean it often sends like a potential partner or a love interest like running and so so that i go back to i don't chase i attract same thing i told the fire signs i'm going to say to you um you know, like clingy and desperate people are usually unattractive. They come off unattractive. So we want to make sure that we're not, we are not in that mode. And if we need to, you know, if we're out there and we, and we think about it and we say, you know what, maybe I am being a little bit much these days. We might even want to consider taking a break from dating while we give ourselves that attention that I also talked about. So moving on to the high priestess and us air signs. Again, similar to um, the earth signs, like I said, the devil could potentially be their own energy, especially if they are Capricorn. This could be our own energy, particularly if we are Gemini. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about the queen of cups. She's also in reverse. So um, for one thing, that could potentially be with whom you are in a relationship and you're both sort of feeling turned upside down. Um, this could be representative of your emotions, again, and feeling sort of, turned upside down and trapped and stuck and um you know i care about this person but i'm not happy so or I'm ha not happy like this so what do i do i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings is one of the things that's coming across to me you also may particularly be a virgo um and or the per a person's uh the queen of cups is uh ex past relationship because again, we have the Virgo or Earth energy showing up in the water um, placement as well with the Hermit, also in reverse. So that can be representative of a, a, a Cancer, perhaps. Um, and a yes or no question, if you had a yes or no question about love or a particular relationship, I'd say the this combination is a soft no you know it's like a maybe no leaning and you know it's really going to be about your free will but again I, th I think that that's coming up because there's something like where you don't want to hurt somebody else's feelings or you know that there are emotions involved you know you don't want to hurt your own like you know you don't want anyone to get hurt but you're feeling a certain way and the Queen of Cups would be more symbolic in general of like day-to-day -day emotions. And again, the devil would be more symbolic of like a long-term situation. So maybe you're thinking like day-to-day, -day, I can't go on emotionally like this, feeling stuck in this long-term situation. This, I've, this has been like this long enough. Maybe. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go on back um, over to the air signs again, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and the High Priestess. So as I said, um, in general, for me, the High Priestess in reverse can be somebody who suffers from some sort of dysmorphia, um, often specifically body dysmorphia. And um, like just needing, just feeling like she needs to get plastic surgery or go on a diet or, or, or something. Um and in love, there can often be like a strong likelihood that others are finding you very attractive, you know, as is the case with the high priestess in general, particularly when she's upright. And we shouldn't ignore this, you know, especially if we're looking for love. But on the other hand, again, because we may be finding it difficult to understand from where others are coming with regard to love and romance, this can be about like it not being clear and us not being necessarily on the same page with these people. And if we're not sure, we definitely should ask and not jump to conclusions. But also one of the things that we could be having trouble understanding is even like, why is this pe person even 
attracted to me, period. Like, or you may not realize about yourself. And that's why I said also self-love could come into play. Or it's another reason why I said self-love can come into play. You may not realize how wonderful, how awesome, how amazing you come off to other people. And that might even that might not even have anything to do with physicality, with your looks or anything. It may be your personality. It may be, you know, the fact that you're a business owner or, you know, you're a boss. You are um, some sort of community leader. You are, um, you know, in the, an entertainer or something. You're in the public eye and... Sometimes people, even people like that, that, that are they're famous, they're out there, they're successful, they still can be like shy people um, in their personal lives. They still can be, you know, very humble people who don't think of themselves or look at themselves in a particular way. So, you know, when we are sort of like fawning over them, they don't, it's like, why? Like, what? What did I do? Like, why? Why would you be interested in me? I'm just a boring old, you know, person that likes to stay at home when I'm not you know, out there on the big screen or whatever. So, you know, so it's that sort of thing. We may want to work on our own self-esteem, self-confidence, and um, opinion of ourselves. There's a song like that. Um, oh, Ariana Grande, right? Isn't Ariana Grande? Like, I like, I like your opinion of me. How does it go again? I can't think of the words right now, but it's something like that. Like, I... I like, um, like picturing me, like through your eyes, or I like, uh, you know, I like your description of me. Maybe we don't like our own description of ourselves, but you know, we like to to view ourselves from that person's perspective because they see something really awesome. Um, what else? So yeah, we if we want to meet somebody, there's huge potential for that. If we're in an existing relationship and the person is trying to express their love to us um, and it's not a situation that, that we feel is imbalanced where we're mistreated or not respected or whatever, it's in a situation where we feel respected. We just don't feel like, how could this person could possibly be telling the truth about how they feel about me? I'm not that great. Um, then do some self-assessment, you know, and maybe again, talk to yourself in the mirror until you believe you are that great because they are being genuine. Last but not least, the water signs and the hermit. So as I mentioned before, also at the start of the reading, the hermit is one of those cards that whether it's upright or it's in reverse, it tends to have the same meaning for the most part. And that in this case is that um, a romance from your past will be rekindled or at least will attempt to be. So you need to ask yourself like whether that's what you really want or if you're thinking that, you know, you want nothing more than... Um, you don't, you don't want a romantic relationship. Maybe, you, you, maybe you're looking for, maybe you'd like to, you know, how they say, roll around the hay again with this person, maybe, but not necessarily to rekindle a relationship, whatever. You got to think about all these things and like, um, does it, you know, does it align with who you are today, what you want today? And if it does, you know, knock yourself out. If it doesn't, then let them know that you're not really interested. Um, you may also already be in a committed relationship and it's important that you um make it a point to like really spend time and energy and attention on each other no matter how busy you are if that's the case so aside from rekindling the relationship if you're already in a relationship it's committed you're happy you're fine um you may be still possibly not spending enough time on your relationship or if you are um, again, single, you're really wanting a relationship and not f figuring out why you're not, or trying to figure out why you're not finding one. Um, again, refer back to this. I have to look at, we have to consider our overall energy too. And it may be because you're focusing too much on work and career and not yourself or your love life. And now let's see if we can quickly pull a card for each sign or at least each element from the other deck. So I already shuffled. I'm just going to pull from the back here. 
Um, all right, we'll try to do each sign. So Aries, Justice. Um, why did I start with Aries? Is that right? Oh yeah, Aries, Taurus, Hangman. Gemini, Four of Wands, Cancer, Four of Swords. So that goes really well, potentially, with your last card, Water Signs, especially if, if you were Cancer, because maybe the fact that you were separated or broken up or whatever from your mate and you want to rekindle a relationship in the past is because you guys were on some sort of break. Four of Swords can be about that. All right, joining Justice from the Numerology deck, Aries, your card is Self-Discipline. So Justice can actually, it represents the sign of Libra, first and foremost, um, I guess. And it can definitely be about balance. It's really like the scales of balance. And so, um, again, not enough attention to self, maybe a lot more attention on other people. So let's let's work on us. And you got sort of like the same energy because you got this like orangish, reddish card that's sort of giving me your fire, right, of Aries. But then the middle, this Merkaba in the middle is green, like the Queen of Pentacles that you just had. So again, it's like that self-nurturing sort of feel to it. Um, so again, Taurus, you got the hangman. It's called awakening in this deck. Look at things from a different perspective. If you're at a temporary standstill, it's important to be yourself. So maybe this is about, again, being honest, communicating what you're feeling in a relationship. And then boom, love partnership. So this is positive for you guys. But yeah, you might need some communication in your situation to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, or in a love partnership, you may feel like you're this, you're in some sort of lull or holding pattern. That could be what the hangman is about too. Hangman is representative of the energy of Pisces or the sign of Pisces. Maybe that's another reason why the queen of, um, cups was the card that I pulled to, you know, sort of clarify the devil in reverse as well. Gemini joining the four of wands. We have parenting. So we may have, um, for some Geminis, maybe if it's not giving birth or learning that we are to give birth eventually with an actual other human, we could be growing something else, raising something else, um, giving life to something else that is bringing us joy. Um, so it could be just, you know, birthing an actual relationship and, you know, growing it together it's giving us to a four of wands is a card of happiness contentment joy abundance um you know and things like in commitment for sure engagement marriage even joining the four of swords for you cancers the card is pride so um again i feel like for for the most part this is about some sort of break or separation and it is pride that is kept um, that going for so long, or if you're, if you're, um, still, if you haven't separated or you're not on some sort of break, like just the feelings of wanting to sort of run away and not deal with a situation or not deal with the way you're feeling is also like pride and an ego, not apologize, not fix it. That's from where it's coming. So these are actually give like one or two quick shuffles to these i won't because we have duplicates of each of these cards it's two decks that i'm working with okay now we got nature here as an overall energy but i'm you know, we should all keep in mind that, that communication was the overall energy before, too, though. Okay, so we just finished Cancer. Leo, this is your card. The Knight of Cups. He is emotional, romantic, enthusiastic, and contemplative. Falling in love or wedding proposals. The need to balance emotions and an invitation to a social event. Um, the Knight of Cups is potentially an actual direct water sign. A Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. 
or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And for me, it's often somebody that's returning to your life, um, you know, potentially an ex or somebody that was in your life before that maybe would like to enter or re-enter in a ro more romantic capacity this time. Virgo. Your card is the Five of Cups. Things not turning out the way you'd hoped. Not seeing the positive in the situation and crying over spilled milk. Libra. The Page of Wands. She's energetic, outgoing, optimistic, and creative. Creative opportunities that you feel passionate about are fluttering your way. Personal growth and broadened horizons will spark fresh and original ideas. Yes, this can be definitely be about new things, new opportunities, maybe particularly involving work or travel because they're wands. And the Page of Wands can also be about like picking up something, finishing something you started in the past. Um, so again, rejuvenating maybe a relationship or something. That was Libra. Scorpio. The sun, Major Arcana card 19. Happy outcome, brilliant new ideas that lead to success if you have confidence in yourself. So whether you are trying to rekindle a relationship from the past or somebody's trying to rekindle a relationship from the past with you or, you know, whatever your situation is, um, this is indicative of, I mean, this is a very positive card. It's saying things are going to go your way. If we are talking specifically about the sun in general as a tarot card and as it relates to love, it too can be about a break, needing a break either as an individual or wanting to take a break as a couple and sort of like run away from the rest of the world. Maybe it's someplace sunny. And from the numerology deck, Leo, we started with, right? Follow your dreams. So if you're thinking about running back to somebody or accepting somebody to run back to you or, you know, just being romantic and falling in love and whatever it is you want to do, go ahead. <laughs> right. You know, you have the confidence to go ahead and do it. Five of Cups. Disappointment. Pessimism is what this card is about. It's things not being exactly the way we envision them. But forgiveness. So maybe forgiveness for somebody for things not turning out the way you'd want it. You seek forgiveness. Somebody seeks forgiveness from you. And there's still hope or they're still positive in this situation. we got to pay attention to the fact that we still got those two cups that are standing up. So we got to look for that, the silver lining there. Um, Leo, Virgo, Libra. I was stuck for a second. Happy ending for you. Didn't Jim and I get a happy ending also? Oh, no, we got parenting. We had a yellow card, but it was parenting. Happy ending for you as well. Actually, the sun represents your sign. Um, maybe there is something going on with Scorpios and Libras. I'm sorry, the sun doesn't represent your sign. Some represents the sign of Cap of um, represents the sign of the page of wands of Sagittarius. And it rules the sign of Leo. I don't know. I thought I was getting something with that. Well, the sun is about a happy outcome, a happy ending, and this is a happy ending too. So maybe Libra, your happy ending again involves a Sagittarius, perhaps. Or a Scorpio. Or both. Cuspian. <laughs> Um, Scorpio, completion. So maybe again, completion of a break, completion of just a, a karmic cycle. Um, and, and we're beginning again. The 19 is actually a one. It's, you know, 19 equals 10 equals one. That's actually my life path number. <laughs> 19, 10, one. Um, so completion in either again in the cycle or it's the end of this break or the end of the situation that you've been dealing with. And again, happy outcome on that situation at the end of the day, you know, all's well that ends well, as they say. All right.
New overall energy of surrender. Card number 91. So it's kind of like a 19 backwards. And Sagittarius. Your card is the five of swords. Your current path isn't leading you to the toward the happiest possible outcomes. Why not change it? Always maintain integrity and compassion, but be alert to the hidden agendas of others. Capricorn. The Hermit. <laughs> Take time for contemplation, to retreat and to go within. Be a beacon for others on their path to spiritual enlightenment. So it was the Cancers and the other reading that got the Hermit. And then we had the Queen of Cups joining you. And I said it might be a Cancer that the court... Capricorns are in a relationship with um, Cancer is also in your mirror sign I don't know something could be going on there with that but again a hermit in love is about rekindling a relationship in the past um, Aquarius another knight of cups romantic flirtatious introspective and enchanting a deeply emotional and probably romantic experience will sweep you off your feet Things can move very quickly during such whirlwind encounters. So stay balanced and make decisions with both your heart and your intellect. The Knight of Cups is potentially a Cancer, Scorpio, a Pisces, or someone likened to those traits or attributes. And last but not least, Pisces, the Ace of Wands. Very nice way to end. An exciting new opportunity. Career advancement. Change your life now. Again.